It's a great privilege to join you today for the 2021 National Stroke Awards and to celebrate the achievements of all the Stroke Award finalists who have gone on above and beyond to make a difference for the stroke community. From fundraisers taking on mammoth physical challenges, to help us spread stroke awareness, to volunteers committed to supporting their fellow stroke survivors, all our finalists are true stroke champions. Congratulations to all the nominees and thank you for your contribution to improve the state of stroke in Australia. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today. And here in Melbourne, that's the Wurundjeri people of the Kulon Nation. And pay my respects to elders past, present, and those emerging, and acknowledge their continuing connection to land, sea, and sky. I'd also like to extend that respect to other Indigenous Australians that may be joining us here today. Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us today for the Stroke Foundation's 2021 Stroke Awards. My name is Sharon McGowan, CEO of the Stroke Foundation. I'd like to extend a warm welcome to our president, Professor James Jim Angus, who you have just heard from, and fellow board members who are joining us online today. I'd also like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the sponsors of today's awards. Our Stroke Awards major sponsor, Ipsen. Our other sponsors include the Australian Physiotherapy Association, Marmalade Melbourne, Precision Fundraising, NAB Community, and Ipsen. A special welcome to all of our finalists and judges joining us online this morning, as well as your families, friends, and supporters. And remember to post your photos on social media with the hashtag StrokeAwards2021. If you're watching on YouTube Premiere or Facebook, please also get involved with the chat to show your support for all our wonderful award finalists and winners. Today we honour the finalists of the 2021 Stroke Awards. 2020 was a challenging year. The coronavirus pandemic changed the way we live, work and engage as individuals and as organisations. For many people in the stroke community, this meant adapting to different approaches to rehabilitation, advocacy and raising funds. Together, we are celebrating many inspiring examples of the innovative endeavours that demonstrate the true spirit of the Australian community. The awards are our way of recognising survivors of stroke and their carers, health professionals and volunteers who have shown outstanding commitment to improving the state of stroke in our country. As CEO, I'm fortunate to have the opportunity to get to know so many of you who support our organisation and our community, and the number of ways in which you have impact every day. Your efforts truly make a difference to people's lives and we couldn't do our work without you. This year, we have awards in six categories. These are the Courage Award, our Creative Award, our Fundraiser of the Year Award, the Improving Life After Stroke Award, our President's Achievement Award, and our Volunteer of the Year Award. We received more than 70 nominations from across the country, and the calibre of entrants once again was truly incredible. Congratulations to all who were nominated this year. Today, we come together from across the country to celebrate all those nominated, and particularly our 27 award finalists. Finalists who have gone above and beyond to make a difference for the stroke community. From survivors of stroke showing immense courage in their recovery, to outstanding volunteers who have given generously of their time. Before we get to each of the award categories, I'd like to thank Ipsen for supporting the National Stroke Awards this year as our major sponsor. All the months of work behind the scenes and celebrating today would not have been possible without Ipsen's terrific support. I'm pleased to welcome Ipsen's Head of Patient Centricity, Warren Brooks, to kick off the next exciting part of proceedings, the announcement of each award. Welcome Warren and our sincere thanks to Ipsen. Thank you, Sharon. At Ipsen, our passion is improving the lives of patients 
and that includes doing what we can to make life better for those impacted by stroke. We're very pleased to be able to support the National Stroke Awards this year. It's wonderful to know our support is directly helping to ensure the important contributions made by survivors of stroke, carers, healthcare workers and volunteers are recognised and celebrated. Congratulations to all the finalists today and best of luck. Thank you, Warren, and our sincere thanks again to Ibsen. I'm excited now to move to our award announcements. Without further ado, let's commence today's award presentations with the Courage Award. The Courage Award recognises the indomitable courage and determination shown by survivors of stroke and carers in the long and often challenging journey of recovery. Stroke Foundation President Professor Jim Angus will join me to announce the winner of this year's Courage Award. This year's finalists are Bob Carey Grave from Ballan in Victoria. Since Bob experienced a stroke, he's had several other health challenges, including cancer, but his positive attitude has never wavered. Bob raised funds by taking part in Run Melbourne in 2019, and I know how hard that is, and also delivers Stroke Safe Speaker presentations. Emma Beasley from Bulwara Heights in New South Wales. Emma was working as a lawyer when a stroke suddenly changed the course of her life. Emma lives with aphasia and has worked tirelessly to learn more about the condition. She's determined to make more people aware of the challenges of living with a hidden disability. Francois Gilroy from Warrywood in New South Wales. 95-year-old Francois is a retired physiotherapist who has volunteered with a stroke support group for more than 25 years before she herself had a stroke. Francois drew inspiration from her patients to fight on and has never given up. Julie and Ross Collins from Doreen in Victoria. Julie Collins became a full-time carer when her husband Ross had a stroke. Julie and Ross made a formidable team, advocating for many years to improve stroke care and raise awareness of the vital role of carers. Tommy Davidson from Mountain River, Tasmania. Tommy is passionate about spreading the word that stroke can impact people at any age after his mother suffered a stroke. 11-year-old Tommy shared the fast signs of stroke message to classes in his school and created his own fast video to spread the important message more widely. Judging this category is always incredibly tough as every finalist is amazing. Now let's pass over to Professor Angus to announce the winner. It gives me great pleasure to announce Emma Beasley from Bolwara Heights, New South Wales as this year's Courage Award winner. Congratulations, Emma. The award is well deserved. Let's hear a few words from Emma. I am thrilled and humbled to be nominated as a voice for all aphasia sufferers. I love spreading awareness about aphasia and that is important to me because not many people know what aphasia is. Aphasia is loss of language, not intelligence. My advice to stroke survivors is to get as much information from the group like the Stroke Foundation and the Australian Aphasia Association. If you can find a local aphasia group, join it. It was the best thing for me and my confidence. The best advice I got was from my poppy. Keep on keeping on. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Emma. And thank you, Professor Angus, for announcing the winner. The next award is the Creative Award. This award celebrates survivors of stroke who are contributing to creative industries, including writing, photography, music, and fine art. This year's wonderful finalists are Alan Tremaine from Wyoming in New South Wales. Alan is a quilt designer and conservationist. After his stroke, despite challenges, Alan created a safe space where others with similar interests could pursue their activities. 
Desney King from Turamura in New South Wales. Desney had been working on a novel for several years before her first stroke. She didn't think it would be anything more than a file on her computer. But 12 years on and many hours of editing it from her bed, Desney's novel, Transit of Angels, has been published. Suzanne Ghent from Daly's Point in New South Wales. Suzanne had to relearn almost everything following her stroke. Now she is a full-time artist, photographer, poet, and jeweler, but the journey has taken much time and patience. Trish Higgins from Rosebury in the Northern Territory. Trish picked up a paintbrush for the very first time after her stroke. Painting gave her a new perspective and drive. Trish hopes to have her own art gallery in the future to share her passion and meet new people. To announce the winner, I'm pleased to introduce you to Sam McCarran, Art Director of Creative Agency Marmalade. Thank you so much to Marmalade for your sponsorship of this important award. Thank you, Sharon, and congratulations to all the finalists. Marmalade is proud to support the Creative Award. It's great to recognise and celebrate survivors of stroke in the community who are actively pursuing creative achievements. I'm honoured to announce that the Creative Award winner for 2021 is Trish Higgins from Rosebury, Northern Territory. Congratulations. Let's hear a few words from Trish. It was such a very big surprise for me to be a finalist in the Stroke Awards. Since I've had my stroke, I haven't been able to work. So I put all my time and effort into painting. I'd love to share my art and sell my art all across Australia. It's bright, it's happy. I want people to share and be happy and learn about the culture of Australia. My new additions are the faceless mob. And anyone out there who has had a stroke, come on, get out there. You can too do whatever you wish to. Plan goals. Don't let anything hold you back. There is so many people out there that are willing to help you. Congratulations, Trish. And thank you again to Sam and to Marmalade. The next category is the Fundraiser of the Year Award. This award recognises the fundraisers who have gone above and beyond to help raise awareness and much needed funds for stroke in Australia. It is open to those who have fundraised for the Stroke Foundation. The finalists are Ash Van Wensby and Adam Hills from Victoria. Adam ran five kilometres every day and Ash ran an extraordinary marathon from their respective rooms while in hotel quarantine in honour of Ash's father, who had sadly passed away after suffering a stroke. Daniel Maitland from Mordialloc in Victoria. Daniel created the Training with Mates Stride for Stroke team, encouraging friends and the community to take part in a Bayside relay Daniel, whose sister Beck is a survivor of stroke, wanted to raise awareness of the hidden impacts of the disease through his fundraising event. David Gannat from Perth in WA and Lee Castledine from Greenslopes in Queensland. David and Lee were filming Australian Survivor All-Stars when Lee received the heartbreaking news that his mother Elizabeth had suffered a stroke. The two joined forces and created the Towel Challenge, social media campaign to raise awareness of stroke in honour of Lee's late mother and Lee's father, Stuart, who is also a survivor of stroke. Jamie and Steve Fitzcarlis from Marrickville in New South Wales. Jamie's husband, Steve, came to the rescue when she experienced a stroke and recognised the fast signs. Three years on, the pair created a fundraising event and ran a 50 kilometre marathon Completing the challenge was a huge physical and mental achievement for Jamie. Jordan and Cody Freeman from Bentley East in Victoria. Jordan and Cody's grandfather suffered a stroke and due to coronavirus travel restrictions, they were unable to visit him in Canberra. 
the siblings decided to show their support in another way and covered 666 kilometers, the distance between them and their grandfather, by running, cycling, and walking spread out over 66 days. Team Regis. Team Regis participated in the Stride for Stroke 2020 and consisted of 63 team members across the different Regis aged care homes in Australia. It was created after much loved staff member Max had a stroke at work. I'd like to thank award sponsor Precision Fundraising and I'm pleased to introduce their general manager Nick Carianas to announce this year's winner. Thank you Sharon and congratulations to all the finalists. Precision Fundraising is a proud supporter of Stroke Foundation and the National Stroke Awards are a highlight. Fundraising is tough but it's also a fun and inspiring way to bring us all together to make a difference, raising awareness and funds for a great purpose to prevent, treat and beat stroke. I'm excited to announce the Fundraiser of the Year Award for 2021 is Lee Castledine from Green Slopes, Queensland and David Gannat from Perth, WA. Congratulations, Lee and David, on having your hard work and inspiring fundraising recognised in this way. Thank you so much. Uh, when David and I first sort of thought of the idea, we had no idea that the, you know, the magnitude of how much awareness and money that it was going to raise. And for the challenge to be that successful at such a really sort of a tough time um, in everyone's lives was, was really, really uh, rewarding. I think the highlight of the towel challenge was, there was two. The, one, the first one was the amount of people that got online. To see the reaction um, of the public was amazing and it really brought a lot of awareness. I think, however, the highlight was, was on the photo shoots and um, you know we had a lot of survivor contestants come in for the photo shoot, but then we also had stroke survivors come in as well and they got their photos taken with you know some of their heroes and, and, and people. Uh, that they really admired and um, to see everyone come together for that photo shoot and get photos um, together was, was a real highlight um, for, for both David and myself. Congratulations David and Lee and thank you to Nick and Precision Fundraising. The next category is the Improving Life After Stroke Award. This award celebrates those who have voluntarily dedicated their time to improving the care and support of survivors of stroke in our community. This year's finalists are Dr. Bradley Butwell from Kingaroo in Queensland. Dr. Bradley Butwell has been giving stroke safe talks in his community for the past 10 years. He draws upon his vast experience in stroke management from 44 years as a rural GP and his own stroke rehabilitation. Brian A. Beth from Picnic Point in New South Wales. Since Brian was discharged from hospital following his stroke, he has committed much time to communicating with and educating health professionals, students and other groups about his journey to help improve their delivery of care. Clive Kempson from Clyde North in Victoria. Following his stroke, Clive has been volunteering and advocating for systemic change in stroke treatment and care through sharing his experience with local and federal MPs and as a consumer advisor for a health network, highlighting the need for increased funding and services in stroke. Mike Whittle from Acton Park in Tasmania. Mike saw the need for direct, practical and emotional support for survivors of stroke following his stroke. He worked tirelessly to establish and maintain a stroke support group, as well as being a stroke safe speaker. Sean O'Brien from Emu Heights in New South Wales. After having a stroke which resulted in aphasia, Sean has worked hard starting an aphasia awareness support group and completing talks in his community to share knowledge about what aphasia is. Before we announce the winner, I'd like to thank award sponsor, Australian Physiotherapy Association, for your important support. And I'm pleased to welcome the association's representative, Natalie Finney, to announce this year's winner. Thank you, Sharon, and congratulations to all the finalists. Everyone is so dedicated to making a difference in people's lives for now and into the future. 
I'm Natalie Finney, Chair of the Australian Physiotherapy Association's National Neurology Group. The association is the peak professional body representing the interests of Australian physiotherapists and their patients. Physiotherapy plays an important role in patients' recovery following stroke, and we are proud to recognise the outstanding efforts of those who are so generous with their time and strive to improve the lives of survivors of stroke. I'm excited to announce the 2021 winner of the Improving Life After Stroke Award. Congratulations, Brian A. Bay from Picnic Point, New South Wales. Congratulations, Brian. Your work communicating with and educating the various stakeholders within the stroke industry is so important. Thank you. Let's hear a few words from Brian. I was I just finished giving a lecture to occupational therapy students and at which I talk about my rehab journey. Uh, and in addition, I talk about my insights and learnings. And I also give them three reasons why they should uh, uh, concentrate after they graduate on, in, in stroke rehab. One is that every stroke patient that they deal with is, is uh, different. Number two is that you get the opportunity to go into someone's life and work with them and change their life permanently Number three is the fact that sometimes you'll form wonderful bonds with your patients and these bonds will last many years. It's such is the depth of uh, thank you and gratitude that these people will feel. From a personal point of view, it's very satisfying that your work is seen to have some value and it's adding to the uh, benefits that are created by, by the clinicians as they go about their min ministering to uh, stroke survivors. Thank you. Congratulations, Brian, and thank you again, Natalie, and the Australian Physiotherapy Association. The next award category is the Volunteer of the Year Award. This award recognises outstanding volunteers whose dedicated service has made a significant difference and contribution to Stroke Foundation's mission to prevent stroke, save lives, and enhance recovery. This year's finalists are Heidi Lee from Glenroy in Victoria. Heidi has been volunteering at the Stroke Foundation since 2017 and has performed many tasks and has played a vital role in supporting the public affairs and advocacy team to engage policymakers at all levels to take action on stroke. Jake Vincent from Kingston in Tasmania. Jake joined the Stroke Safe volunteer team following his stroke at the age of 22 Jake is passionate about spreading the FAST message and providing a consumer voice on stroke. Janet Weir from Plimpton in South Australia. Janet is a volunteer stroke safe speaker who joined the program when it first started in South Australia. Janet understands the impact of stroke on families after her father, uncle and daughter all experienced trans ischemic attacks, TIAs or mini strokes. John Stevens from Cambridge in Tasmania. John is a stroke safe ambassador who presents in and around Hobart and in regional Tasmania. He is pivotal to the volunteer team, contributing his time and his positive ideas. I'd like to thank award sponsor NAB Education and Community Business for its important support and welcome Loretta Salabanks, NAB's Associate Director of Government, Education and Community to announce this year's winner. Thank you, Sharon, and congratulations to all the finalists for this year. It's really great that NAB can be part of the National Stroke Awards, especially to support outstanding volunteers. It's a shame not everyone can be a winner, but I'd like to announce the Volunteer of the Year Award for 2021 is Jake Vincent from Kingston, Tasmania. Well done, Jake. Thank you for supporting the Stroke Foundation and for supporting those people who are in need. Now I'd like to pass you over to Jake. He's got a few words. The most rewarding part of being a volunteer is um, probably seeing uh, people walk out of presentations, um, talking amongst themselves about, about you know, just what I've, what I've spoken about and the experience that I've said. And, and um, some things can be confronting to people and other people um, can find them enlightening. And, you know, just seeing people in thought um, about what you've just said is, is very rewarding to me. And I get great satisfaction out of that. Congratulations, Jake. 
and thank you again to NAB Education and Community and to Loretta, and also NAB's Kate Twideford, Senior Associate of Strategic Giving, who assisted in the judging for this category. I'd now like to invite Stroke Foundation President, Professor James Angus AO, to present our President's Achievement Award. Professor Angus was appointed as President of the Stroke Foundation in 2015 and is retiring from the board this month at the end of his two terms. Professor Angus is an Honorary Professorial Fellow and Professor Emeritus of the Department of Pharmacology and Therapeutics in the Faculty of Medicine, Dentistry and Health Sciences at the University of Melbourne. He is recognised as a leading academic and medical educator and as a contributor to a range of advisory boards and professional organisations, both nationally and internationally. Please welcome to present the President's Achievement Award, Professor Jim Angus. This year, for the fourth time, I have the pleasure of presenting the President's Achievement Award. The award acknowledges those individuals who make outstanding contributions to the Stroke Foundation and State of Stroke in Australia. This year, we have three finalists. They have all played a major role in partnering with the Stroke Foundation and have worked tirelessly to reduce the burden of stroke in Australia. They are Adrian O'Malley from Carlton, New South Wales, Adrian began his relationship with the Stroke Foundation a year after his stroke in 2007. Adrian volunteers his time and shares his knowledge and experience to promote efforts to prevent and treat stroke and enhance recovery. Adrian helps the Stroke Foundation on many support levels, from being a media spokesperson on a range of topics to being an advocate during state and federal election campaigns. Additionally, Adrian is a founding member of Stroke Foundation's Consumer Council and is currently a member of the Young Stroke Project Lived Experience Working Group and Steering Committee. Eleanor Horton from Little Mountain, Queensland. Eleanor's leadership as a carer, consumer for many years has spanned local, state and national levels. She is a carer for her partner who had a stroke 20 years ago along with her father, who is also a stroke survivor, and her mother. Eleanor also works full-time as a senior nurse lecturer at a university. Eleanor's background as a health professional and her role as a carer for a survivor of stroke gives her exceptional insight that has informed her role as a carer consumer. Eleanor's representation and advocacy for carer support on the Stroke Foundation Research Advisory Committee resulted in the area being prioritised in the organisation's 2020 Research Grant Round. Associate Professor Monique Kilkenny from Park Orchards, Victoria. Associate Professor Kilkenny has been making invaluable contributions to the Stroke Foundation in both health services research and health policy since 2007. Monique is responsible for the design of evaluations, analyses and interpretation of data for several flagship programs for the Stroke Foundation. The programs include Know Your Numbers, Stroke Safe Ambassador Program and the National Audit Program. Monique has co-authored more than 20 papers using the data from the evaluation of these programs. Her reports have been used to guide policy directions for improving prevention efforts and quality of care initiatives in hospitals. Monique is also the senior epidemiologist with oversight of the analyses for the Australian Stroke Clinical Registry and is responsible for organising the annual National Stroke Data Linkage Workshop as part of the National Stroke Data and Quality Improvement Forum. So as you can see, the calibre of this year's President's Achievement Award finalists has been exceptional. However, there can only be one winner. So I am very pleased to announce the winner of this year's President's Achievement Award is Eleanor Horton from Little Mountain, Queensland. Let's hear from Eleanor. I would like a world without stroke. And I have strived through my involvement with the Stroke Foundation 
to be involved as much as I can to ensure that options are available for stroke survivors. I've been involved with the Stroke Foundation for many years in numerous capacities. It was 10 years ago this year that we started the Consumer Council and that has led to significant changes for consumers and carers being involved in the Foundation. I've lobbied for carer training and research into care, meeting carers' needs, always ensuring and trying to put forward the carer's voice. As being a carer wasn't in my life plan, I don't think it's in anyone's life plan and having a stroke is such a sudden crisis. Times are changing, options are changing and the future of stroke care and research is extremely exciting. Congratulations, Eleanor, and thank you again to Professor Jim Angus. I'd now like to introduce Lisa Murphy, Executive Director of Stroke Services at the Stroke Foundation, to make an exciting announcement. Thank you, Sharon, and I would like to join you, Professor Angus, and our sponsors in congratulating the award winners today. It's my pleasure to announce a new category for next year's Stroke Awards, the Young Stroke Champion Awards. It will be open to those under 18 years of age to especially recognise their contributions. They could be a survivor of stroke or someone who has done something significant for stroke, such as advocacy or fundraising. We look forward to being able to share the Young Stroke Champion Award and what will no doubt be some inspirational young people with our community in 2022. I'd like to extend a huge thank you to our award sponsors and judges who took part this year. It's been an absolute privilege to be here today to honour all of our finalists. These awards are our way of acknowledging the incredible work and commitment of survivors of stroke, carers, volunteers and health professionals. So thank you to everyone who took the time to nominate and to all of you who have joined us for our online event today. Please join me in congratulating again all of the 2021 Stroke Award finalists and our amazing winners. Thank you all so much. <laughs>